Okay, now we're back, back on track. So the interesting thing I could not show you here right now was um, that we have imported beers from this database. Um, we have the beer types and the beer brands in it. And the interesting thing was that I coupled the existing data uh, with this schema. This was something I wanted to show you in, in, the, in the live demo. So, um, but it has not worked apparently. Because the interesting thing here is you can add, you can dynamically add schema information to map onto existing graph data. So for example, if we had another type of um, data in it, like uh, something, something other, sorry? Price. Price, right. You could, um, yeah, price would maybe something, uh, is something we would map or, uh, or uh, uh, model as, as a property, but country, country right, country something like a country and, um, and in this resolution is not not on the screen anymore <laughs> um, but you can connect that and here I can I can show you how to connect and disconnect like now the brewery and the beer brand and and we can just connect that by relationship here and call it brews and now the system knows that there is a brewery that has beer brands of course the um, uh, cardinality has to be set to one too many. So we have a uh, property here called breweries automatically created from this relationship definition. So this is the schema we can create um, as a meta schema, meta model, which is in the graph, which can then connect to existing graph data. And then we can um, like use this um, integrated uh, tool. Uh, okay, we have graph database, but still tables are very useful uh, when it comes to editing um, data in it. Um, you can um, yeah, modify your data, or add new uh, things, but the interesting thing is like, how can we create uh, pages? Because we wanted to create a web application. Now, I will just go to um, getbootstrap.com where we find some nice HTML5 templates. Um, here are some examples. And uh, like this one, the starter template, which is very clean and, and short. It's better to run, it's ideal to run demos. Now let's call it, for example, home. And now in the background, structure reads this page, extracts all the information from it or not. <laughs> um, okay, let's try another template. Let's use this one. I hope this one works better. Okay, so without network connection that mm, might be, but I have one here. I'm, I'm not sure that um, I'm in the right um, network. So <laughs> with the IPv6 protocol, it didn't work. But it, okay, now I have prepared a nice page, which is here. Um, and I just explain you how I created this page because yeah, it doesn't seem to work in um, live. So after importing a page from a template, all these nodes are in the graph. In, in Neo4j, we have um, a page node, um, HTML, and all these do dom document object model elements in the graph. Structure, uh, or on the backend side, we have implemented the complete W3C DOM uh, document object model because it was a very uh, stable and very powerful standard. So we have these like static um, document object tree in uh, on the server side and, and when we render a page we just start at, at the page uh, element and go through the graph. It's like a graph traversal, it's very fast and we can do uh, page rendering in about uh, 20 milliseconds without caching. And when it comes to um, dynamic data, 
then we just can go to a like table in this case and here we have a table row element and this table row element has a um, data query attached to it um, it reads breweries sort um, equals and here's the request parameter sort with um, if it's empty then just take name order uh, and paging parameters attached to it. So this query is a REST query. It's the same query you can use to, um, to access the uh, REST JSON interface of structure. Of course, we could also use a Cypher query for more complex queries. And um, as long as structure knows about the data type in the result set, which we can like, map, <coughs> uh, map with this um, dynamic schema, um, then we can work with this result set and all the objects are, bind, are bound to um, a certain data key. Um, in this example, it's brewery. And um, now we just use the elements of the brewery object with brewery.name. And this, in this way, we can create uh, a nice table. And uh, can even page through this table and we have interactive elements um, you can automatically if you assign a certain attribute to this um, element you can um, you have an interactive mode built into this so you can very easily create interactive applications and um, search would be something other interesting thing some other, um, like, um, this is built, like, just by using a, I will now show you the source code view. This is, like, the template language. It's not really a template language because it's just a, a different representation. I will just make it a little bit larger. different representation of the nodes in, in, in structure or in Neo4j with, with all these attributes. And you can see the um, raw uh, data for this, um, for this element. And um, this renders a uh, input field for a search functionality and sets the, if you enter a search name like Give me a beer name, Rick, please. Du Duval. Duval. Like. <coughs> so you find these two beers um, with beer type and uh, yeah, beer type is it and alcohol percentage, right? Um, and for example, the um, beer type is just um, you can just um, access. Um, connected data to this beer brand node by concat concat concatenate uh, the property property names here. So it's very really very convenient to yeah build um, web-based applications around an existing graph. Okay, so um, it did not work like I had planned it um, <laughs> due to some things I might have missed um, staying here on the stage. Um, we have about five minutes left for questions. And um, yeah, if you like to uh, try it out for yourself, you can download it on, on structure.com. I recommend you the, to use the current snapshot version. This is the most uh, um, actual uh, version and the, has this dynamic schema thing in it. And um, we want to release a 1.0 version in February. We have just one little thing left to do. It, that's um, migration to Neo4j 2.0. So this is a quite large step for us because we're using the Java embedded API or the co core API running Neo4j embedded. And to have all these new um, uh, power of Neo4j 2.0, we, we, we definitely want to do this step before 1.0. Um, yeah, you can download, install, play around, and we want to release some more uh, videos um, 
uh, how to create such applications. Okay, thanks very much. You have questions? Um, uh, not now, but, um, well, okay, the, the, the question was the administration steps I did on the command line, are they possible to do through the web UI? Um, not, not now. Um, you can uh, access all the data through the web UI, like the typical, um, the, um, the um, the rest data you can access like like which which is used to build these tables this ui uh, just um, speaks with the server just uh, uses the uh, json rest uh, api as well and it's a good idea to for example use um, a command line interface maybe or map the command line tools to to web functions yeah okay any other questions Okay, then thank you.